Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Suren Bagdasarian. Uh, we will be present, uh, presenting all three of us. This is Liam from Oracle, Liam Powell, and uh, Michelle Lespinas uh, from Facebook. So we are working on scalability, scalability solutions for MMAPLOCK, and we'll talk about some updates in that area. So more specifically, we'll talk about maple trees, uh, SPF, and RVMA locks. And let's see. So a quick recap about this issue. So um, the issue is basically that uh, MAPSTRAC has a one um, read-write semaphore which protects the whole MM and which is taken for write whenever we um, make modifications to VMA tree or VMA flags and which is taken for read uh, by the page, uh, page fault handlers. And uh, because this uh, lock covers the whole MM, uh, it doesn't allow um, to, to have parallel updates and uh, page faults, even if they happen in different VMAs. So it basically is, so the lock is very coarse grained and that prevents some of the uh, parallelism that might have been actually achieved if it was more uh, fine grained. And we have seen issues uh, caused by that in Android uh, when we, um, uh, when applications have mul multiple threads and they set up their stacks, uh, which is basically updating VMAs and there are page faults going, going on in parallel. Also, the same issue was reported in Google Fibers, and we have seen some issues also with uh, SMAP and MMAP interfaces related to that. Um, so, Leon will talk about maple trees and updates in this area. Uh, yeah, so uh, the maple tree updates kind of uh, uh, where we are right now. Um, I added the maple tree uh, mainly to try and reduce the, the number of uh, the messiness of, of updating the list of VMAs. So uh, the VMA is tracked right now with three uh, structures and basically we're removing that to, to make it just the one structure. So when you wanna change the list, you can just use one interface to do it all. Uh, that's pretty important when you're looking at uh, the locking, adding and removing. Um, you don't wanna be locking to change the, uh, the link list and everything. So the, uh, the one structure kind of cleans up what we're doing in the code and removes the complexity of, of something that's already um, tension in the code itself. So that's kind of where we're, we're going there. Um, so yeah, there's other uses for the maple tree, but it's outside of the scope of the talk. It also allow, will allow us for, to look up the VMAs um, without locks, right, uh, under our seal. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, lockless. It can be RCU uh, safe. Uh, right now, it's not operating in RCU safe mode. It's in the uh, Linux next tree. It's not operating in RCU safe mode. Uh, I didn't really want to uh, suggest we go there yet because a lot of people think that that will add a lot of complexity to tracking the VMAs. Uh, but if we need to, it is possible. And for those who want to know more about the maple tree. Yes, if you want to learn more about the maple tree, there's a talk later on. Uh, Wednesday at? Wednesday, uh, yes, uh, the afternoon. <laughs> in the afternoon <laughs> track. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liam. And uh, Michelle will present uh, updates on the SPF front. Right, so, um... SPF that, that's been uh, an effort that uh, actually has been worked over many years. Uh, I kind of picked it up from uh, Laurent. Um, what it does is that it tries to do page faults without taking the MMAP lock. And um, so you can think of it a bit like a transaction. It will, uh, there's, um, a per mm counter that every writer will increment and so it will uh, it will at the start of the page fault check that there's no writer uh, in progress and then it will try to do 
the entire page fold and when it's time uh, to commit the result of the page fold at the end, which is to add the, the new page into the process uh, address space, it will already have taken the page table lock at that point and that can be a synchronization point. It will double check that the that there's still no writer and that there's been no writer in between and so it knows that the whole work that 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 it's done uh is still valid at that point and it will try to commit the transaction at that point uh and if that doesn't work then it will just release that page and uh retry the whole thing taking the log this time so uh the um, the idea there is to try to do page faults without having to take the, the Nmap block. Um, there's working code for that. Uh, there's not enough consensus about it right now. We, we kind of had a discussion about it uh, last time in Pondering. So out of that came the third approach that um, that's going to be discussed, which is uh, to try to have pro VMA logs right and uh, and we also plan to to have our spf trees for people who want to try it and uh you know maybe that we will find more use cases that uh, benefit from it um so as michelle noticed um Uh, so this VMA, uh, per, per VMA logs idea basically came up after uh, we discussed the um, speculative page faults uh, during the LSFMM in April. And the idea is basically um, to have a log which is a finer grain that's a map log and which will cover just specific VMAs. Uh, so basically each VMA now gets a, a read-write semaphore log um, it will be taken for write, just like with mmap lock case, whenever VMA is being modified, unmapped, mapped, remapped, and so on, or our flags are changed. And page faults will look up the VMA under RCU protection. And then uh, when it finds it, it will lock it. We'll, we'll check it that it's still uh, valid because under RCU, it's, um, it will return you a VMA, but it will, might return a wrong VMA. So we have to double check after we locked it. And if it's still valid, then we basically proceed and we know that VMA is valid and it's not locked. Um, let me see. So issues that uh, became quite apparent right from the start that was that um, Per VMA locks are uh, just following the usual lock and lock pattern is not, it complicates things um, when it's, um, when we're talking about per VMA locks. Uh, there are several issues that uh, one of them is we might need to lock multiple VMAs within one update. So when I talk about one update, that means when we take a map lock and then we release a map lock, so that's kind of a transaction. So within one transaction, we might need to lock multiple VMAs, for example, during the VMA split or merge. Um, and that requires tracking those VMAs. That also requires careful ordering of locks and unlocks to prevent deadlocks. Uh, another issue is that locking and unlocking might happen in different functions in different levels. Um, locking might happen in one function, which is called by another function, which already locked that VMA. So all those um, little details add complexity. Um, therefore, uh, and also another big thing is that at the end, we need to unlock multiple VMAs potentially, and that better be done in, uh, in an efficient way. Um, so all that basically brought up the idea of having a, um, a different locking pattern where we, instead of locking, unlocking each VMA, we basically during the transaction, we mark specific VMAs locked. And uh, at the end, we just unmark all of them. And the way we, uh, I achieve that is by uh, having sequence counters, both in VMA and MM. And the rules are pretty simple. When those sequence counters are equal, the VMA is locked. And whereas they are not equal, the VMA is free. So it's not locked. 
So when we want to mark a VMA locked, we take the lock, we uh, set the VMA's sequence counter equal to MM sequence counter, and we unlock that VMA. So when reader goes and checks if the VMA is locked, it just needs to check whether those two values agree. This allows us to easily uh, lock multiple VMAs within a transaction. Basically what you do, you assign the same sequence number to them. And when you have to unlock, you just change the MM's sequence counter and that automatically unlocks the locked VMA or VMAs that are marked as locked. Um, that idea came up after the first version, which I uh, uh, posted internally within some group. And I think it was David Lore who reviewed that. And the original version had a list of locked VMAs. And he said it's horrible because we potentially have to walk thousands of VMAs um, just to unlock all of them. So iteration might take quite some time. Um, so that's the ba basic idea and that's the basic deviation from the original suggestions that Matthew did about per so, VMA locks. So I'm guessing you have uh, some kind of retry loop if uh, you enter the read and right. sequence counter. Yes, just like with speculative page faulting, if as a Page, uh, page fault handler, it doesn't lock, it try, tries to lock the per VMA lock, and if it fails, it uh, falls back on the MMAP lock uh, mechanism. Um, if in my testings, again, I'm testing usually with Android, it's less than 0.01% uh, when we have to do that. Uh, again, it doesn't guarantee that in all cases we will have such a high success rate, but it's, it's already shows that uh, in most cases, we don't have to fall back on this. And that there are other cases where we'll fall back to taking the MF. So for example, the, uh, the, the RB tree walk can lead us to the wrong VMA if it's being modified at the same time that we walked under RCU. And in that case, we'll also fall back to the MMAP send. Right, and just to clarify, right now, uh, what the patch sets, the RFC that I posted, it handles only anonymous pages, which are not swapped back, but we have plans to basically enable it for more cases for both file back pages and swap back pages. So it was also uh, mentioned that user fault D also can't handle it right now, but we can figure out how to handle them too. Um, I think it's, it's worth mentioning, so I wasn't aware of this and you still haven't put it in your commit messages. Our standard red black tree in the co uh, code in the kernel now has provisions for uh, making modifications safe for concurrent readers, which is really cool. And I think more people should know about. Happy somebody likes it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there are more questions. Yeah. I think like after following the upstream discussion, I think there was one concern that there is an issue with there is still an issue without speculative page faults if the, we have fairly large VMAs, right? Yes. Right. So, uh, as Peter Zin noticed, that if we have just one VMA, uh, this does, is not going to help anyone because basically you're replacing one big lock with another big lock. Um, this. In, in our case, we are targeting a different issue where we want to allow. Um, you know, the concurrent updates and page faults when when the updates are happening in the different VMAs. For to allow such a thing for a one big VMA, we have to have like granular locks, not per VMA, but even more fine grained. Yeah, my, my, my question would have been: Has anybody already looked into splitting such large VMAs into? Smaller yet yet still large VMAs to see if this could help some of the workloads that are still suffering. I mean, if you have like a one terabyte VMA, cut it down into whatever one thousand twenty-four. Oh, VMAs. I see. And I mean, some updates will be slower, but I mean, oh, some some logic basically in the kernel which would um, break up a huge VMA into multiple ones to, to okay. avoid this. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, if somebody already tried that. I mean, you need some kind of heuristic, ob obviously. Yeah, but I haven't tried it, and I have haven't heard about such a uh, um, activity. Uh, but I, I have seen some out of tree code that did that that worked 
big DMAs into smaller ones. Mm -hmm. um, generally, I think, especially for anonymous VMAs, the, the VMAs don't really align well with uh, user space visible context, uh, with user space user space objects like you could have two threads doing two m maps and the kernel will happily put them next to each other and create one big vma to cover them both and you 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 could argue that with files the, the things are aligned better to uh user space visible things but for unknown vmas that it really doesn't align well so that's kind of what I don't like about the idea of uh, per VMA logs is that uh, it kind of goes counter to what the kernel does when it merges adjacent VMAs. Well, the merging is one optimization, right? And we have a different optimization. So my question would then exactly be how to combine these both optimizations. Yeah, I mean, I... We, we have a maximum of number of VMAs per process that's clear. But I mean, you, for example, as, as long as you stay under a certain limit, you could say, well, like if I have something bigger than whatsoever, I'm going to split it up or do another walkover, like after some runtime, do a walkover in the process. But that's just some wild ideas because, like, I, I remember mm -hmm. Peter's comment regarding these large VMAs. Yeah, no, that's a good idea that might make this even more useful. As a use cases that we currently target is when uh, basically we have many VMAs and because the lock is so big, we cannot really um, benefit from the fact that, you know, we have different areas and there's no reason really to prevent one from page faulting in one area when you are updating completely unrelated area. So that's our ba uh, main target right now. But yeah, if uh, one big VMA becomes or we have we see more use cases where there is an issue with big VMAs. Maybe a logic to speed it up would would make sense. Proper heuristic sounds like it depends on user space access patterns, and I suspect that we're not going to have any daemon, <laughs> any any knowledge or bounds on what kind of access patterns those are. I, I wouldn't expect them to be a flat random distribution. I think like there's Daemon that tries to monitor exactly that. And okay. and I mean, Daemon even does VMA modifications and optimizations, flying flags, paging out stuff. So maybe that could be one thing on top. Yeah, it, it's heuristics, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah, I guess we will need to build up some kind of uh, mechanism to collect statistics to figure out, you know, what what kind of heuristics would be useful and in which cases. But yeah, this, that investigation hasn't been done yet. Um, I, one thing I noticed uh, when we we're talking about this is that we didn't, I don't know if you mentioned that your code specifically uses the RB tree. Uh, it doesn't use the maple tree yet. Right. Uh, and that came up also when Matthew mentioned that the RB tree is uh, RCU safe and that you can walk it, but you have to make sure you land on the right node because if there's an edit in the RCU tree at the same time, you end up, you could end up in the completely wrong location. Um, so that check will go away and make the code simpler once we switch this to Maple Tree. Um, it's also worth noting that we have to switch to Maple Tree because of the other two structures that are used to track the VMAs. Yeah, yeah, Maple Tree definitely make it simpler, and that code is quite separated so that when that switch happens, we can just change in one place and um, should be easy. And the other thing I was thinking when you were talking about splitting up the VMAs is when we map a new VMA, we check the previous and the next to see if it can be merged. So <laughs> we would do this dance right now where we would split it and then merge it to the next one. Uh, so that would be something we would have to look at if we we're going to optimize by splitting up the VMAs. And when we do that, we end up needing to we end up needing to change the RMAP interval trees while holding the 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 same log that protects the uh, arbitrary or the what? Am I right? The interval tree has to be updated for the gaps. Is what you mean? Yes. Yeah. We need to. We need to. You can't. Uh, you cannot. You cannot update the interval trees for RMAP 
without holding the, the mapping for the direct mapping. Uh, right, the, the arm. The log for the direct mapping at the same time. Okay. Can I have to update both together or something? Or it, there's a trick to hide it or something, right? Right now in the code. In the R map. I'm not sure either. <laughs> we'll need some more discussions. <laughs> it's a complicated <laughs> problem. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If no more questions, I I would like some people to try the programming logs when I post V1. Right now it's in RFC state and there were already some uh, comments which require uh, basically changing it a little bit. But while, once a V1 is out, it would be really useful if people can run some benchmarks and let me know if there are any regressions because that's my biggest worry that in some cases, basically instead of taking one lock, we have to take multiple locks, and I do want to know if it regresses any use cases or workloads. That would be really, really good input from the community. That's definitely helpful. That, uh, if I understand the implementation correctly, you could always, like you could have a magic toggle that always falls back to the slow path and like would allow you to like change it in the code fairly easily to either enable or disable the whole optimization. Right, but for example, in exit and map, we have to take, right now we're just taking a map log and that way we, we can uh, guarantee that there is no page faults happening in parallel. Uh, but with per VMA logs, we basically, in cases when we treat a process as one whole, not collection of VMAs, we have to take all of them to just make sure that it's protected completely. Uh, I need to talk to Michal Hoko about exit MM. Um, maybe it's not required to, to log all the VMAs. I think it's required, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but in those cases, when we treat basically the whole MM as a whole, rather than its parts, we have to take multiple VMAs instead of one, uh, multiple logs instead of one, and that might affect some workloads. I haven't seen that. I've, I've run a number of benchmarks, haven't seen uh, the regression, but doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So if, you know, more people can try it out and let me know, that would be really helpful. I thought you got one minute left. So. Like you're exiting, so. Uh, technically, yes, but still, you, you know, if we can avoid regression anywhere, we should try that. Uh, actually, was the last last patch in my RFC uh, addressed that a little bit because we noticed that with RCUs, uh, with freeing VMAs, when we take too many times so RCU, especially when uh, callback offloading is enabled, it regresses the exit pass. So I had to implement that uh, bulk freeing of VMAs basically is the last patch to address that. But again, if there are more cases like that, I would I would want to know. And it does seem a little silly, but the exit path, people do care about it a lot because when you're shutting something down, you have to really get that has to be finished before you can start something else. So people actually really care about it. It's one of the top things on one of our lists somewhere. So it matters. Okay. All right, thank you very much.